Welcome along to our video tutorial series where we are learning how to create Minecraft worlds using Python code. Now in this video tutorial I'm going to show you a few different ways that we can build a single block into our Minecraft world using some pretty basic code. So what I mean by that is just basically grabbing one of these blocks that you can see here. Um, you've got any of these blocks really that you can use. We're just going to pick one of these blocks and we're going to put one of them into our world using code. It's as simple as that. So let's get started on using the first method. There's three different methods I'm going to show you and basically you can pick whichever one you prefer to build with in Minecraft. So, so I'll show you three different ways. You pick whichever one you understand the most I suppose. So the first thing we need to do is we need to write in those two lines of code that we always write in when we are coding with Minecraft. So we need to write from mcpy.minecraft import star or asterisk. That's just saying we're going to import all of the functions from the Minecraft module which is basically a library of code written by some other smart person and we are accessing that code to allow us to build things in Minecraft. Uh, the second line of code that you need to write simply connects the two apps to one another so mu and Minecraft will begin talking to each other once we get in this line of code. It's just going to say mc equals Minecraft with a capital M dot create and then open and close a set of round brackets. So those two lines of code there you'll get used to writing them as the term goes on. They need to go at the top of every single one of our programs that we write when we are coding in Minecraft. Okay now the next line of code that I'm going to put in is the line of code to build a single block in the Minecraft world. And before I put it in I'm going to put in something called a comment. A comment looks like this. We put a hashtag at the start and then we just write in plain English what is happening in our code. So I'm just going to write um, build a single block in the Minecraft world. Okay so a comment is not actually code it's just plain simple English that is in there to help other people who are looking at your code understand what's going on. So I'm going to put that comment there that just tells people the next line of code is about building a single block in the Minecraft world. When the computer spots a hashtag like that, when it processes or runs your code, it knows when it sees a hashtag, this isn't actually code, so it just skips straight over it and begins processing the next line. Okay, so let's put in this next line of code that will actually build that block in Minecraft. We need to write mc.setBlock. And what we're doing here is we're accessing a function called setBlock, and that comes from this Minecraft module, this Minecraft library. And it allows us to build a single block into the Minecraft world. Once we've written mc.setBlock you need to open up a set of round brackets. And inside of those round brackets what you need to do is write down your coordinates where you would like to position that block in your Minecraft world. So one thing you need to understand about um, Minecraft is that it's a 3D world. So it's made up of an x-axis which runs left to right We've also got a y-axis which runs up and down, so I'm currently going up the y-axis and now I'm going down the y-axis. And we've also got a z-axis which moves forward and backwards. So they're the three different axes in play here in our 3D world. And if you look closely up in the top left hand corner of your Minecraft screen, you'll see you've got some numbers in white up there. There's three numbers and that tells you your current position in the Minecraft world on the x-axis, the y-axis, and the z-axis. Okay, so we're going to use these numbers now to position a block pretty much just next to us in the Minecraft world. Okay, so back to our code we've got mc.setBlock and now all we need to write in is our x, y and z coordinates where we'd like to position that block. So looking at my three numbers I've got minus 109.5 for my x position. So I'm going to write in minus 109. I'm not going to do the decimal point because you don't have to be that fussy. So I'm going to put minus 109 and I'm going to put 7 for my y axis, or y coordinate. And for my z coordinate, it says 39.2 but I might go 39. And the final number that we need to put in is the number, well it's called a block ID. So we've got, oops, sorry, just jump back to Minecraft here. We've got all these different blocks plus a few more that we can use or place into our Minecraft world. And each of those blocks is represented by a number. 
If you're in my class, I'll give you a copy of this block ID list, which gives you a list of all the different blocks you can use and the associated number that goes with it. So in this example, what I want to do is I want to place a gold block into our world. So we would use number 41 for that. Okay, so the last thing I'm going to write into this set of round brackets is the number 41. And then I'll close my brackets off. And that's it. That's the code you need to place a single block into your Minecraft world. So just to explain again, we're running a function called setBlock. And we just tell it the X coordinate, the Y coordinate, and the Z coordinate, where we would like to position that block. And finally, the last number is the block ID. So remember I showed you that list a moment ago. If you don't want to use that list, or if you're not in my class, you can actually get on the internet. And there's a few websites that show you what all the different um, block ID numbers are, like this one here, Raspberry um, Pi Spy. .co.uk has this website and it gives you a list of all the different blocks that you can use and the numbers that go with them. Okay, so that's just another way you can get the different um, block ID numbers. So now that you've got that code written in, it's time to test it. So before you test it, you've got to save it. So make sure you go into your um, appropriate folder. And we're going to call this number two, placing a block. Once you've got it saved, give it a run. And I can just see in my Minecraft window this block has appeared almost where I'm standing. So I'll just move back a bit. And you can see that has placed a single gold block into my Minecraft world. If I change one of these numbers, so for example the 39, if I change that to 40, this should place another block right next to it. So I'll give that a run again. And you can see another block has appeared just a little bit further along on the Z axis. If I want to change the X axis to maybe minus 108, you watch a new block appear going in a different direction. Okay, so, whoops, I just broke one there, but it's that new block there came in. If I want to go up in the air, I would change this 7 here to an 8, and it would build a gold block on top of what I've already got. Alright, so you can get a bit of an idea just by changing those coordinates, the X, the Y, and the Z, you can get different blocks built into your world. All right, that's the first method that you can use to build um, a single block into your Minecraft world. Now, there's two other methods I want to show you quickly. The next one, I'm just going to delete what I've got here. And I'm going to basically start fresh. So, I'll just move my player maybe up here. So, we're at some different coordinates now. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to list the X, Y, and Z values before I actually call up the set block fun function. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to write X equals, Y equals, Z equals, and I'm also going to write block equals. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to write in the X coordinate they want to use, the Y coordinate they want to use, the Z coordinate I want to use, and the block ID that I'm hoping to use. So looking at my coordinates up here, I'm going to place the X value at minus 112, Y value is going to be 8, and the Z value can be, we'll make it 32. Now the block I'm going to use for this one, if I just have a quick look over here, I might go with iron ore this time, so number 15 for iron ore. So the block I'm using is number 15. Okay, now to finish this code off, what we need to do is, whoops, write MC dot set block. Now this time, instead of writing these numbers in, all I need to write in now is X, Y, Z, and block. And then close my brackets off. Okay, let me explain what's going on here. What we have created up here are things called variables. Now variables, you can basically think of them like buckets. They're used in coding to store some information inside of them. So in this case, we've got a bucket called X. So imagine you've got a bucket with the letter X written on front of it. We've got another bucket called Y, a third bucket called Z, and then a final bucket with the name block written across the front of it. And inside of those buckets, we've written down this number for the X bucket. So we've basically written minus 112 on a piece of paper and put it inside of that bucket. Or variable. We've got the number 8 in the Y bucket, 32 in the Z, and 15 in the block bucket. And we can use those numbers again throughout our code by calling them up like we've done down here. So variables 
are basically used to store information and we can reuse that information time and time again throughout our code. And that's what we're doing down here. We're basically emptying the buckets into these set of brackets so the computer knows what coordinates we want to use and what block we want to use to build with. A little bit confusing, but we're going to be using variables quite a bit this term. So the more practice you get with it, the more it's going to make sense. So don't worry if it doesn't make too much sense right now. Okay, so let's give that a run. We might save it first, actually. Give it a run. And if we just jump back here, there we go. You can see the iron ore block floating in the air there, but that appeared at the three coordinates that I wanted it to. And you can see we've changed our block up a little bit. So that's the second method that you can use to adding a block into your Minecraft world. It's a little bit more code, but I guess it's a bit easier to understand. Okay, so we've got that as method number two. What I'm going to do now is delete all of that and show you the final method. So I'm just going to move to another patch of grass, so just over here. And what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to get the computer to determine the current position of my player and then place a block exactly where I'm standing. So instead of typing in those X, Y, and Z values up here, I'm going to get the computer to do that for me. Okay, so I'm going to create some variables again, so some buckets that are going to hold some information. So I'm going to call them X, Y, and Z again. But this time I'm just going to put them on the one line and separate them by a comma. So X, Y, and Z equals I'm going to write mc.player.getPos and then open and close a set of brackets. So this is running a function called getPos, which stands for get position. And basically that is getting the player's current position in the Minecraft world. It gets the X, the Y, and the Z coordinates, and it places them inside of these variables or these buckets, just like we did before. So the X value will go into the X bucket, the Y value into the Y, and the Z will go into the Z bucket. Okay, and we can empty those buckets out into our code in just a moment to place a block into our world. So we just need to use the code that we've already used before, mc.setBlock. And we're going to write x, y, and z. Now we haven't told the computer um, which block we're using yet, so the block I might use this time. Uh, what's a good looking block? Let's use some um, obsidian, so that is number 49. So I'm going to, just going to write in number 49 there and close my set of brackets off. Okay, so to quickly explain, I might even put in some comments. I forgot to do that in the last method there, but I'll put in a comment here that says, get the player's current position in the world. Okay, so remember this comment is just plain English explaining what's happening in our code. And this line here just gets the X, Y, and Z coordinates from our current position and puts them into those variables. Now down on the next line here, it will build a block. Basically, it's building a block and putting it into our Minecraft world where we're currently standing. So let's save that, give that a run. Now you won't really see the block straight up because it's in your current position, but if you just move backwards a little bit, you can see you've got a block of obsidian where we were standing. If we move to the side and run that again, you'll see that block gets built in your current position again okay so each time you move the computer realizes that and it gets your new position and it updates what's inside of that those variables or those buckets okay so they are the three different ways that you can um, add a single block into your Minecraft world in the next video I'm going to show you how to stack multiple blocks into your world so we're working towards building bigger objects okay so I'll see you in that next video